This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. Senator Murkowski, Dave Steeran says hi. And so Senator Uh, Murkowski joins us. Sorry, my dear. I'm so sorry to be breaking in on a conversation with with my friend Dave Steeran. No, well, you know that he loves and supports you, as do I. Congratulations. You are so busy. I try not to bug you. If if your ears have been burning, we've had people call in to say, we love Lisa, we're supportive. Nobody said no, but somebody called in and said, why do you like her? And I'm asking Tom Anderson why I like you. I ranted for 12 minutes, positively, obviously. And so <laughs> the last time they asked you that. Yeah, question. that's right. They're like, geez, they probably hung up on me, but you have filed. It was expected. Here, Here's a question. I'm going to give you a t- tough question. And normally, normally okay. I give you okay. softballs, but I will. Why did you wait so long to file? Was it that you were working on the infrastructure bill and you put that first? Well, I did put that first, and that was a priority for me. It was a priority for the state. I think it's a priority for the country. But the reason I waited, oh, my goodness, can we all agree? I don't care what political persuasion you are. I don't care where you are. But elections go on too long. Yeah. And so, you know, you you have people that start these a couple years in advance. And you know what? Think about how tedious this gets. The public gets tired of it. And if the public gets tired of it, believe it or not, the candidate gets tired of it too. So I figured that announcing a year out, actually now we're at 300 and uh, what, uh, 60, yeah. 60 days Jeez. until <laughs> until the, uh, the election, that's plenty of time. That's plenty of time to campaign. So... Um, part of it was was working on Alaska's priorities, doing the best job that I can every day that Alaskans have asked me to do. Um, but also, I didn't want to have to start putting campaign commercials in front of people no. tank- tanking their their their. Uh, TV time too soon. So a year is plenty. Well, I have talked to so many business people and you know, I have an advertising and public relations firm. You, you were there with me when I was in office and, and we, I was a legislative aide for Terry Martin and everybody adored mm-hmm. you and said, run for office. You were an attorney in Anchorage, but, but now I'm in the private sector and you and I don't catch up as much as I'd like because we're both busy. But as a, as a CEO or whatever my title is, managing partner at our firm, we do look at at what's happening for our clients in healthcare, in construction, across the board in Arctic infrastructure. And I will tell you right now, I can't speak for everybody on earth, but for the clients that I have, where they're people of stature, men and women that run businesses, they are all high-fiving you and Senator Sullivan and Don Young. That's a trio that's beautiful. It's re- reminiscent of the days of your dad and Stevens and Young that you all supported and you help lead and contour the infrastructure bill. I don't know if people realize the magnitude. Are you finding that? Not that you'd say, hey, you're ignorant on this. They don't get it. Some don't. How huge it is for Alaska. Well, you're right, Tom. And I, I think it, they don't realize it yet because it hasn't quite materialized. You know, so much goes on in Washington, D.C. that's just a lot of talk and you don't see it translate into, into um, actual law. And that's the difference here with this bipartisan infrastructure bill. You know, we are, the president's going to sign this uh, on Monday, and yeah. then the next step is implementation. And when, it, when we say implementation, the, the, the formula funds that will be coming to the state of Alaska, the grant opportunities that are going to be coming to us, the, the influx of money that we're going to see with, for broadband, for water and wastewater, for what's going to happen with our bridges and our roads and our ferries and our ports and our harvests. This is consequential. This is historic. In it's, it's historic, Lisa. And we're going to start seeing it. Yeah. It is. Now, we it got a break. Historic. We only have a two-minute break. You call in. Pretty please just stay with me a couple more minutes. Okay. We have a big audience, Matt Sue in Anchorage, and they want to hear from U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski announcing today, thank God. I was all of us bated breath. She's running for re-election. She's going to be our next U.S. Senator yet again. We'll come back with her right here on the Tom Anderson Show. This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. 
We are back with U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski. Yes, that Lisa Murkowski. And Lisa, we're talking about the infrastructure bill. I have, uh, my firm owns Alaska Politics and Elections, which is a, a kind of a burgeoning news source. And we contract with a fellow named, nobody would know his name, but you might soon, named Ben O'Rourke. And he's a fan of yours. He's a Brit. He's in UK. And he was at the, what is it, the COP21, mm-hmm. the, the, the conference. And you were there, yeah. and, I, and we just in, interviewed Dan Crenshaw, the Navy SEAL, injured Navy SEAL without the eye yeah. from Texas, and, and and others. You know, we have a lot of, you may not know this because you probably can't listen from D.C., but we have a lot of uh, congressional folks on. Anyway, he was there. And, and mm-hmm. real quick, not to jump, take away from the infrastructure bill, but what was your thoughts of that event, especially going, representing Alaska? Well, you know, there was a lot of raised eyebrows, like why would a Republican exactly. from a producing state go to go to a global climate conference? And, you know, it's pretty simple. When people are talking about you, you better be in the room. You better be there to hear not only what they're saying, but to stand up and speak out and give the Alaska perspective. And, and so it was the first time I'd ever been to a COP conference, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Um, my takeaway is that, you know, there, there are those who are in a very privileged position. Their economies are strong. They've, they've had technologies that are allowing them to move rapidly uh, away from, from carbon. And then there are the have-nots. And this world is not very cleanly divided. Being, being energy secure as a country is, is critically important, but we also have to be very, very cognizant of those who are energy vulnerable, and so many of those are here in our own state. We might produce the resource, but, uh, you know, when you're a community that's paying 40, 40 to 50 cents a kilowatt hour, as some of our communities are when you're off the, off the grid, you know, it's not a very sustainable opportunity. It's not an economy that you can count on. So trying to find this balance as we work to reduce emissions, do it responsibly, take care uh, of, of the environment that we have, reduce our footprint. These are all good things, but we have to make sure that we're still still strong from an economic perspective. So it was, it was an eye opener. I was really glad that I was there. I'm actually. glad you were there on our behalf. It's critical. And by the way, again, apeonline.org, we have that and we're writing and you're going to see some articles coming supportive of what you're doing soon enough. But that said, back in the days when I was a lawmaker and you were a lawmaker, I remember how detailed I wasn't on the finance committee, but how detailed and structured it was to meet and greet and look at and listen to advocacies. When you look at it, not state level or city or borough level or county level, but federal level, we get into, you know, massive trillion dollar numbers. You were in the heart of that negotiation and debate, were you not? This wasn't just a yeah. vote yay or nay. From what I heard in my sources in D.C., U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski, who we're talking to right now, uh, you, you were instrumental and, and definitely integrated m- many parts of that bill for Alaska's benefit. Was that maybe your claim to fame? Is that your claim to fame in your, um, in your tenure as a U.S. Senator, this bill? Well, I, I think it is, it's fair to say that this is probably the most consequential legislation that I've ever worked on. And it's going to be consequential going forward because of, of what it will provide for Alaska and our needed infrastructure. As I reminded so many of my colleagues, for them, what they were talking about was rebuilding crumbling infrastructure. And for us in Alaska, it's building it for the first time. And so having having Alaska's voice heard and heard clearly, um, being at the table. And keep in mind, as you point out, this was a small table. There were 10 of us. I worked. I didn't know that. Yeah, I had no idea how many. I I knew that you were one, but I didn't know it was that small. Five Republicans, five Democrats, and it came together, actually, because this was the same group of, of Republicans and Democrats, plus one more on each side. Uh, that that worked to build out the um, the the last coronavirus relief package um, last last year at this time we came together at a dinner at my house and said look there's got to be a way that we can build some kind of agreement going forward we did that we were successful um, that was signed into law and and we said all right what's next 
And we looked at what what Biden had laid down with his initial uh, infrastructure package, and it was ginormous. It was unsustainable, and it was ridiculous in terms of defining everything under the sun as infrastructure. So this group of five R's and five D's came together again over pizza this time. I don't know why all all consequential things come about in cold pizza, but this <laughs> it's a did. must. And and we worked. We worked for months and months trying to narrow the scope so that it was hard infrastructure, infrastructure that is not going to increase inflationary pressures, infrastructure that was not going to raise taxes. And we came together, we got it done, we passed it in the Senate on a strong bipartisan basis. We had 19 Republicans, and then it went over to the House and kind of sat there in purgatory because it was being used as leverage by the progressives who were trying to to build out this this extraordinarily expansive social spending plan that they're still trying to work through the, 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 the details on that, but there are details that are not going to be good for Alaska, and I don't think they're going to be good for the country in terms of the level of spending and really having government oversight of, of so much of, of people's everyday lives. So the infrastructure bill was, is good, is strong, is going to become law, president's going to sign it on Monday. And the benefits for Alaska, whether you are on the road system, whether you're down in Southeast and you're going to see a, a, a revitalized Alaska Marine Highway system, when, whether you are a coastal community and the benefit that you're going to see to your small port or here in, in, in South Central region with our ports here, what we're going to see with broadband, with, with water and, and, and wastewater systems, what we're going to be able to do with our structurally deficient bridges, it's, it is pretty significant in size and scope, but again, one that really addresses the supply side of our economy, making sure that we're going to be more productive, we're going to have greater efficiency, we're going to be a stronger nation going forward because of this. Absolutely. U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski joining us, talking about the infrastructure bill that U.S. Senator Dan Sullivan, Congressman Don Young, and she worked on, and she took the lead as one of the 10, and Biden, President Biden, is going to sign it. And this is one where we're not looking at politics, folks. We're lo- looking at what helps Alaska and Alaskans and commerce and industry. This one profoundly does. With a minute and a half left, one other claim to fame. I am so proud of you on behalf of our indigenous women across America. Really quick, tell me about that legislation. Yeah, no, we're, we're continuing to work on addressing the, just the, the serious disparities when it comes to access to justice for so many indigenous women. Our statistics are really quite shocking when it comes to murdered and missing indigenous women. So shining a spotlight on this, working to address that, uh, working to address the issues of domestic violence throughout the country and certainly in Alaska where our statistics are are really um, beyond troubling. So we've got a lot that we're working on there. Before we sign off, though, Tom, I just want to give a shout out to Don Young. You know, I mentioned that this bill was, was over there in purgatory on the House side for a couple months. Don Young looked at this and said, this infrastructure build out is going to be important for the state of Alaska. He worked hard to make sure that there were Republicans in the House who withstood some pretty significant pressure from people who said, wait, you don't want to give a win to Joe Biden. And Don Young said, exactly as as I have, that this is not a win for Biden. This is not a win for Democrats or Republicans, this is a win for the country. This is a win for Alaska. So I just, I want to give him a shout out because he certainly earned it over there. He was one of only 13 Republicans, folks, that said, hey, this is about Alaska and the United States. U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski, one of your colleagues told me you are the Arctic policy lawmaker of the of all the Congress, and I want to talk to you about that in the future. We'll get you back again soon. Congratulations today, filing for re-election. We love you and keep up the good work. Thanks so much, Tom. Good to be with you, and we'll talk later. Absolutely. Happy holidays. That's U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski. Hey, I'm Tom Anderson. These are the guests we get on this show, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday, right here on KVNT. Tom Steigman and I bid you a happy weekend. Drive safe. God bless.